Okay, are you guys ready to rock? Betty, ready? Ready to rock, ready to rock, thumbs up, ready to rock. Okay. All right, welcome everybody. We're excited about this presentation today. And um, like I said, I'm gonna share my screen and you'll see a PowerPoint presentation. And as we go through the presentation, if you have a question, please use chat. Betty's gonna go over this again with you. But um, just know that we're really happy that all of you are here and we hope you learn a lot and we hope that everybody's just relaxed and has relaxed and has a good time, okay? So here we go. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, I'm Betty Hamilton, the WAHI president-elect, and my primary role is to oversee interest group activities. Now that doesn't mean manage them, it just means to make sure that uh, you have the assistance and support you need. Since we don't have the advantage of being together in a room to see each other, I'm going to call on each of you to introduce yourself and give the name of the group that you lead. So I'm just going to go down my list of names. I'm hoping more people are joining us. Um, first, Susan Flynn. Yes. Unmute. On the water. Susan Flynn on the water. Okay. Linda, as in Banj. We have several Lindas. Movie matinees and munchies. Thank you. Anne. Anne Gerth. The International Lunch Group with Marie Danforth. Uh, Jude. Hi. Um, uh, I lead the Canasta group. Bobby. Had to get on. I don't see myself. I don't know if you do. Yeah, we see you. <laughs> okay. Sorry about the hair. Um, I do Castaway Book Group and um, Don't Just Leave Them Jewelry Memoir Rating, which I'm practicing to do on Zoom. And uh, Bookmarkers with Linda Donahoe, which we have tabled for this year. Thank you, Bobby. You're a busy lady. Uh, mm -hmm. Tamara. Hi guys, Tamara, Pinterest, interest. Sandy. Sandy Brooks, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, okay. Um, a happy cooker's four, and we are also on hiatus for the rest of this year. For the rest of 2020, right? Right, and yes. we're gonna play it by ear the beginning of next year. Well, we hope it will be a good year coming up. Yes, we do. Elizabeth, I don't think she joined us. Uh, Linda Schilder, Maggie Bailey. I'm here, but I signed in with Facebook, so you're seeing a picture of my um, sister, uh, my daughter's dog. So sorry about that. Um, no problem. I am doing pickleball and play. Donna. Donna Field. Linda Dreisbeck. Is Linda with us? Maybe not. Linda was on just a few minutes ago. Let me see. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I had mute on. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm doing the Out to Lunch Bunch with Cindy Gambon, uh, fundraising funds. And uh, we're starting a new one. I'm not quite sure what we ended up calling it. Um, it was down, uh, something like about uh, Down uh, Wine Wednesday. I think that's what she called it. Okay. Ellen Jackson. Connie. I know Connie's there. Connie, are you unmuting? 
Connie, can you push your space bar? And that will let you talk? He has to hold it down. Right. Um, also, she can use that mute microphone in the bottom of the screen. Let me see if I can. I'm going to have to get out of the PowerPoint to help her. Can somebody um, look on participants and see if they, well, they probably can't. Never mind. Hold she on. was unmuted. Yeah. Can you hear me? This is Lisa Darienzo. Yes. Well, Connie Bearding and I are co-chairs for Difference Makers. Oh, okay. Thanks, Lisa. Sure. She, Connie, was she, she is on the participants, under participants. Yes. And yeah, she, she was. She here. is unmuted, too. She's so. not muted, yeah. Right, I'm not sure what. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Okay. Um, Joan Grayson. And ladies, ladies lunch and literature. Thank you, John. Uh, Dara. Dara's muted. Okay. Dara, can you unmute? Uh, yeah. Okay. There I go. Okay. I, I did have it. It must have muted again. Um, I'm doing the uh, wine tasting club, but I hear there's another wine club, so maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm confused. So um, I didn't know there was a second one, but that's oh, okay if they oh, want to do it. Okay, I think it's <laughs> one, uh, the the wine and nine, the golf group. Mm. I didn't okay. think that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that later. No, it, was, it was down here. Carol McCarthy. Hmm. All right, uh, Marie Danforth. Yes, I'm gonna be um, doing the International Lunch Club with uh, Ann Gerth. Thank you. Sherilyn Dolab. Uh, I'm going to be doing Cooking Crew too. And Nancy Lee. I have Blue Stocking Book Club. I love that name. Karen Rudy, are you there? Karen? I think Karen's on an iPad. Yeah, she is. Okay. Karen's muted. Karen, you have to unmute. Karen, can you unmute? Okay. Uh, Sherry Thomas? I'm doing a new club called Spilled the Beans, a new interest group, and we're gonna just enjoy coffee together and learn different things about coffee. Great, thank you, Sherry. Okay, did I miss anybody? If I did, give a shout out. Uh, this is, this is Sue Fisher. Hi, Sue. Hi, I just signed up today. I don't know how to get my picture on here, but my name is on the little screens. You're good. Okay. Okay. Sue, can you give us the group, uh, interest sure. group you lead? Gallery I'm gals. Sorry? Gallery gals. Oh, yes. Okay. Good deal. All right. And Betty, this is, Linda, ja this is Linda Jackson, and I'm doing Apple technology. Oh, okay, dope. I think I've got everybody. Is Carol has Carol McCarthy joined us? Uh, this is Carol Ringler. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm um, I'm doing pickle and play with Maggie Bailey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Um, Betty, right. is there a, Betty, is there a Wednesday wine? Sandy Brooks said there was a Wednesday wine. I, I am not familiar with the Wednesday wine. I was familiar with the uh, wine and nine. Linda Dreisbach is the one who mentioned it. With the cheese. Yeah, uh, Cindy, I didn't know what name she finally came up with, but 
Cindy wanted to do something and asked me to be part of this, but being away, we have not really uh, sat together and done anything okay. on this yet. So I know okay. that as much as all of you know, other than I said I would do it with her. Okay, okay. well, we'll It was gonna be called Happy Hours, and so it's not specifically focused on wine, so it's different from Barrett's group. Yeah, um, it would be me. So it, would, it would be meeting like uh, we thought maybe every other month and uh, pick one night. I don't know if it was going to be Wednesday or, you know, whatever. Uh, and just uh, maybe about five o'clock to start a wine and, and had nothing to do with food and wine. It would probably just be uh, appetizers and getting a glass of wine. Okay, or, okay. Linda. Linda, we'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? So I okay. get a better feel for what you have in mind. Thank you. Um, before we begin, I want to thank Kathy Reynolds, uh, communications chair, and her webmaster team, Jude Eakin and Susie Huseman, for engineering this Zoom meeting. They are absolutely phenomenal, as you will see going through the afternoon. Also, a big thanks and shout out to our president, Tamara, for her input into this and to so many activities, but most of all, her unfailing leadership in these very challenging times. There are just a few housekeeping details I want to go over before we really get going here. Um, Kathy already mentioned the mute uh, using your space bar. You can hold it down when you want to speak and let it up. Or in the left-hand corner of your Zoom screen, you'll see a little microphone and you can mute and unmute yourself there. Um, also, on the space bar that should come up across the bottom, you'll see a little chat icon. If you have a question that immediately comes to mind, you don't want to lose that thought, you can click on that chat, type in your question, and the host will recognize that and we will deal with it either during the uh, time that we're setting aside regular intervals for you to ask questions, or if it's really critical, uh, we'll bring it up. Okay, somebody else just joined us. All right. Um, now, let's real quickly go through the agenda. Tamara is going to kick us off this afternoon by highlighting Wahi history and mission and present the goals for our 60th year. This is really a, a special year in many ways, but I don't think Tamara anticipated the 60th year would quite be like this. Linda's iPhone, you need to mute yourself, please. Who's... who's um, I have some question. Hmm. Kathy, can you mute her? Linda's iPhone. Yeah, I'll have to stop sharing. It, or give okay. me host privileges and I'll do it. All right. After Tamara, I will give you an update on the status of interest groups as we know it today. Um, and also review with you uh, the policies and procedures document that you should have received as a handout just before this session. Um, after that, Kathy is going to uh, begin the presentation going over why he communications and giving an overview of the website as a very important tool to help you in managing your groups. Kathy, Jude, and Susie, the dynamic trio, will then get into the heart of the training, which I know you are all anxious for, navigating and using the website. Uh, we'll end with some time for at the very end for any lingering questions that you might have that have 
not been answered during the course of the afternoon. So, camera, you're on. Unmute, hon. Still muted, camera. <laughs> I'm pressing my space bar. How about this? Better? Yes. Okay. Um, I really wanted to express my appreciation and thanks for everybody stepping forward this year as part of our Wahi leadership team with you um, serving as interest group leaders. I think the word of the year is going to be different, um, not necessarily different from the things that we wanted to do differently, but just due to different due to the um, issues and concerns with our larger community and environment. Um, so I think this year is about flexibility, agility, and um, trying to engage with members wherever they're at. You know, there's a wide range of members that are staying at home because they have health issues and concerns. And there's a wide number of women that are absolutely fine going indoors and sitting at restaurants. And out of 800 women that we've enjoyed in our association, there's a broad spectrum of what people are comfortable doing and what they're not comfortable doing. So bottom line for you as an interest group leader, it's whatever you are comfortable doing is what we need to be doing. Um, and along this way, you'll see some of those adjustments that we've had to make to traditional WAHI activities along the way um, as a result of uh, COVID. So first of all, thank you for being on a different year. Uh, our goals for this year are, we have four goals. One is, number one is to provide safe operations for our members. And we appreciate you all um, reading the COVID policy and returning your volunteer release. Um, that was an important policy for the board and council this year to get right, and we consulted with a number of different organizations in order to do that. We appreciate uh, your support, and clearly you have a big role in making sure that we're doing that um, clearly and accurately um, in doing your interest group activities as well. Last year we did do a membership boundary change, and we want to make sure that all women that are in our membership boundaries are welcome to join. Um, so we've got, you know, Defusky Island, additional areas in Bluffton that are now available to be members. Uh, you will be seeing some advertising for membership in CH2 in the next couple months and um, doing some other kind of creative things um, around getting the word out on membership availability. Um, Linda Jackson is also doing another membership renewal push here at the back end of, um, back end of the summer. We are also focused on different variety and programming. It's not just around the four membership luncheons that we've traditionally had. Last year, we had branched out into doing some online things with the Mary Alice Monroe webinar when that was canceled in person, as well as doing a chef and author series activities. And you'll see more of that this year, and I'll talk about that uh, momentarily. And we're gonna celebrate our 60 year legacy. Um, we're gonna celebrate maybe a little differently than what we had expected but we've got great partnership right now with the Heritage Library. And um, I'll share with that a little bit in a moment too. So next slide, um, I wanna thank the over, uh, um, almost 150 women who responded to our membership survey. And these give, this uh, slide gives you the top line as to what did the feedback reveal. And uh, I think it was a little stronger of a result in people considering attending the September uh, meeting and luncheon than what I had expected. Um, you have uh, perhaps seen the Wahi Wednesday e-blast um, e that went out last week and then also this week with some more information. And we do prefer the outdoor venue. We are okay with the box lunch and we are doing those things in September. Um, we also have very strong response from the membership around the online programming via Zoom. Today we're using the Zoom meeting platform where we can all see each other and talk. And then there's another Zoom product called Zoom webinar and that's what we use for the Mary Alice Monroe piece. And so we'll be using both of those different platforms depending on the type of event that we're um, doing. But hopefully that response is going to be reflected in the event registrations as well. 87% um, of members reported that they were okay with an interest group size of 20 or less. And clearly you heard, uh, for example, from Dara, who I think it was Dara who said she wasn't meeting until next year, or Sandy Brooks said they weren't going to meet in her um, cooking group until next year. You know, those are the decisions that you and your groups can be making. Um, I think for Pinterest interest, we had a couple um, sessions last year that were over 20. You know, I think as an interest group leader, I'm planning 10 or less in my interest group for, for, um, for this year, at least for the first part of the year. Um, I think the top three reasons for people, why people join WAHI are really helpful to understand. 
making new friends, which means that the whole mixing social aspects of how we do our different activities is important, as well as the ability for people to um, have a great uh, luncheon experience and learning more about our community and our community partners engaged with us this year are gonna help us along. Um, what was also I thought was important was we had almost 42% of the survey respondents come back and give some idea around what they wanted for their 60th anniversary gift, which is something the organization has traditionally done around major um, anniversary milestones. And I'll show that in a moment as well. So the next slide, this is our membership meeting. It's on Tuesday, September 22nd, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're gonna be using the Marianne Peoples Pavilion at Coastal Discovery. Um, Stan Smith is our Wimbledon and US Open uh, champion. He's also Smith Stearns Tennis Academy at Sea Pines tennis shoes, and author. And here is my uh, Stan Smith tennis shoe that I'm going to have him autograph when we are with, with him together in September. Um, we also are having the community table. This was uh, something that we started in Dara's year where we had a nonprofit organization come and participate with our luncheon. Um, and we've invited the League of Women Voters, Patricia Felton Montgomery, who's their um, president, to come and speak around voting and voting information. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. Um, and then Difference Makers is going to be collecting backpacks for backpack. <coughs> and so we're excited for all of those pieces to come together in an outdoor venue with lots of space and with appropriate social distancing and masking. On the next slide um, are a couple additional little pieces of information. One is that it is a picnic and everybody will have an individually packaged picnic lunch. You're gonna order what do you want, your two choices of turkey and cranberry or vegetarian, and it'll be packaged and ready to go and you uh, will grab and go. Along that line, if the members choose not to stay for the luncheon, they can come, they can pick up their directory, they can uh, sign up if they need to sign up in person for the uh, interest groups, but they can grab and go with their bag and leave. And we're going to broadcast via Zoom the membership uh, program portion with Stan Smith and Patricia Felton Montgomery online. So if people don't want to stay in, the, stay in the outdoor venue, they can go home and watch online. Um, the picnic seating, we are not doing any reserved seating this year with the exception for of uh, handicapped and uh, special needs members. That will, they will have reserved seating. There will be uh, open seating in the pavilion as well as picnic tables and then some seating under the live oak trees is spreading around the pavilion area, which should be very pleasant as well. The, um, uh, just a couple things that we're doing differently with the um, event as well is we are making cash and credit the same price. Traditionally, the organization has had two prices with a, what I would consider to be a, a nuisance fee upcharge for using the credit. Well, we're trying to make it easier for the volunteers that work on the back end of the process, as well as make it easier for our members to click on the website, pay on the website, and have all of that transaction be done. And uh, hopefully making the cash and credit the same price is going to help facilitate that process. Um, we really want to make it easier for the volunteers volunteering, as well as easier for the members to be paying and uh, click and pay. The, um, Next slide gives you a preview of the other things we're working on. December, we are planning, I will use the word, it's going to be different from what we have traditionally done. When we're planning these different events, we are not planning to be indoors in a hotel ballroom. These are gonna be different types of venues this year, really hoping to focus on outside, open air type of locations. Um, Joni Vanderslice is gonna be our keynote for, uh, she's the CEO of J Banks Design, design firm. She's going to be our keynote for February, which is going to be our 60th celebration activity. And um, we're going to go back to 1967 in April with a Wahi style show, um, but we're going to update it for 2021. So it's going to have a bit of a twist. The um, community tables that are here are also reflective of the charities of uh, the nonprofit giving that we're going to be giving this year. One of the feedback items from the membership survey was, you know, and one of, the, one of the pieces that we've talked about in the past is it would sure like nice to be know at the beginning of the year what we were gonna be contributing to. So the board and council made the decision of these are going to be non-competitive grants to the Children's Center Heritage Library and Sea Turtle Patrol this year. Those are organizations that have a rich history with um, WAHI over time. For example, the Children's Center, we paid for their first rent check. 
Heritage Library was uh, was previously a Wahi interest group in genealogy and was spun up eventually into the Heritage Library. And Sea Turtle Patrol is right there with a sweet spot in our mission of environmental activism. So all of those organizations are going to be getting a non-competitive grant. We're going to feature them in our in our um, community table at each of these quarterly luncheon activities. The next slide has the um, author series and, and perhaps you saw that last Wednesday as it came out and you'll see now on the website the event registration opportunity. Um, Kristen Harmel and, and I'll say that all of these I believe are Simon and Schuster authors. They're all well regarded, well respected authors and for us to be able to get this is really a credit to Linda Kennan and Janet Porter and the work that they're doing on the author series so far. So Kristen Harmel is our first one and we've booked all the way through. These are Thursday at 5 p.m. The intent here is that you can log on, you grab your glass of wine or your cup of tea or whatever you want for your drink of choice, and you can have a great um, author event in your home. Read the book before, read the book afterwards, um, but just get engaged in a different type of experience to kind of keep you reading and keep you, keep you learning. Uh, the next slide gives you the picture of um, of Kristen here, and she'll be talking about her last, her latest new book, The Book of Lost Names, which just comes out on July 21st. So all of these authors were getting embedded into their release process, and usually they're coming out with a new book um, that they're in the process of promoting and will be sharing their, um, their thoughts along the way. So hopefully you can share the word, particularly for those um, interest group leaders that are book group folks. Um, to spread the word about these different um, authors that are coming in so that you can get your, your uh, folks registered. The, uh, the next slide is around our chef series and what we're planning with that. And again, we've got an awesome team of folks that are um, helping orchestrate things. These are gonna be a combination of Zoom meetings as well as some in-person opportunities. And the in-person opportunities are gonna be really dependent upon the restaurant itself. So the first is going to be Tortuga Taco. We're gonna go on a road trip here on July 27th to Hilton Head Harbor and enjoy a food truck. Not everybody laugh. Food trucks are hitting Hilton Head large and we're gonna go behind the scenes with food trucks and, uh, and experience Tortuga Taco. They're gonna do a deal of the day if you wanna do in person or you can be online at noon and talk to the owners, the chef of the food truck and experience the food truck process and learn a little bit more about that food service operation. We're gonna do some skill building uh, with the cookery. We've got Michael Anthony's TOs. We've got a conversation with rollers coming up, another conversation with Frankie Bones, and we're looking for a few others to join for the fall season. Um, but these are, you know, there may be an ingredients list. You can download and participate. You may be able to go by the restaurant and pick up a box for you to cook alongside or just enjoy um, a wine tasting process. So we're looking to create a lot of different opportunities um, along the way. Next slide. Our charitable fund giving plan, again, this was something that was uh, feedback from the membership survey for a few folks that had said is, you know, what are we giving to this year and, and how does that work? And so these are the charities that we've selected. Um, of course, Wahi's Community Serp Youth Awards, this is the 40th year of that award, so we're going to be celebrating that in the April luncheon. So these are going to be non, those are non-competitive uh, awards. The second level is Women and Children Charities, since we are a women's organization this year, we're going to focus on women and children. And then the last one is the 60th anniversary gift. And that's kind of the picture of how things are evolving. Um, but it's all dependent upon the uh, financial wherewithal that we have within our association, which is a lot re related to membership and membership um, numbers. The next slide gives you some of the feedback that folks provided in the membership survey around the anniversary gift. These are some awesome suggestions that we got from our members that we can be considering. At the September luncheon, we're also going to have another opportunity for membership feedback. People can come up to a board, write their additional suggestions on. And then I think between those two outreach activities for input, the board and council will have more than enough to do to really begin to work what is the anniversary gift gonna be and then overlay that with the financial wherewithal that we've got within the association. The next um, slide and, and my uh, final slide is really the fundraising plan. 
And uh, this year we've, we've enjoyed almost uh, 40 members already that have given to the Diamond Anniversary Membership, which is just a huge benefit for um, fundraising of what's happening. We're doing a 60th anniversary barbecue bash, October 29th, 5 to 9 at Indigo Run, um, their community center. I think it's called Indigo Hall. Socially distant, the facility is like a 350 person facility and I think we're having 125 people attend. It's an outdoor venue as well. Um, One Hot Mamas and Single Husbands Band are going to be uh, the keynote feature and Linda Dreisbach and the folks that are supporting this are doing an amazing job and pulling a really fun night together in a, um, in a COVID, in a COVID concerned area. Um, we're going to do a, a silent auction in February 2021 around the luncheon, a golf scramble in April. And then just because of the um, business conditions that we have within our community, we're really not expecting a lot of shop for a cause events this year. Um, you know, it's just awkward asking businesses for a lot of support when they are struggling to stay in business. And uh, we have gotten Evelyn and Arthur to make a commitment for December for a shop for the cause, but we're looking at other opportunities for um, where the public, the shop for causes are important because the public contributes to that, not just WAHI members. But we are doing some outreach with Village of Wexford and Shelter Cove Town Center for possible other types of events that are there. And of course, member contributions. So that's, uh, that's once over the world for 60th anniversary planning so far. Of course, all of it could be subject to change based on what's happening in our public health. Number one is just keep yourselves uh, safe and healthy. And we are um, making, we are in the process of making um, care packages for interest groups and interest group leaders. In your care package, you will be receiving single use disposable face masks for any member that shows up that does not have a face mask and you need to have face masks and then hand sanitizer. So Betty, I'm sure we'll be touching base with you um, shortly around the distribution of those as well, probably in August or early September. So it looks like we've got some questions on the chat pod or comments on the chat pod. Do we need to have some shot, Doc? No, there was only one question about adding a list and I said I could put that on the events page for the authors and the chefs. That was the only question. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Thanks, Betty. A lot of energy, a lot of dedication to Wahi has gone into what looks to be a phenomenal year ahead of us. We're not going to let COVID dampen our spirits or our involvement for sure. Um, just want to go over with you real quickly the status of interest groups right now. Uh, we currently have 45 that are uh, still alive um, and we have among those we have five new interest groups this year. There are three groups uh, that are currently without leaders, and I want to share that with you. The Bookies Book Club, the Cookbook Club, and World Travel. So if you could spread the word around and let me know if you uh, hear about any members who may have skills or interests in those areas and might want to step in to fill these voids, certainly would appreciate that. And of course, as you heard earlier in the um, introduction that there might be some opportunities uh, even right now for adding more interest groups. So they certainly are welcome along the way, um, creative ideas and creative ways of, of getting together. All of you and your groups are facing really difficult challenges this year with planning your activities and finding creative ways to get together while adhering to the COVID public health guidelines to provide a safe experience for everybody. Some of the groups are not gonna be meeting until January, while others are going to get together in smaller groups. They're finding ways of splitting up and looking, and many of them looking for, one, for more ways to have their activities be in an outside environment. 
for example, difference makers is considering um, community projects that will not require, I'm going to call it hands-on volunteer participation this year. It will be um, providing services or donations or collections or whatever that are needed. And they are, they have been in consultation with the uh, Low Country Foundation to find out where there may be areas of need in the community that haven't even come to our attention. Um, I, that's about it for the interest groups. Uh, just keep things going, ladies, keep things going. Uh, let's take a look now uh, at the interest group policies and procedures. You all received a, college, a copy of that in your handouts yesterday or this morning. And I'm just going to do an overview. The first section of it covers operations. Um, as you're probably well aware, each group is managed independently and does not receive any financial support from uh, the Board of Council. Uh, group, some groups charge a fee, uh, but the fees should not be set up for the financial gain of the leader. Keep that in mind. Um, any funds for that are collected for administrative expenses of the group should be distributed, should be used throughout the year. Um, if these funds are not used within the year, uh, there are a couple of options that are available to deal with any excess. Um, one, up to $200 of an excess can be rolled over to the next year with the consent of the group members. Groups are also encouraged to donate excess funds um, to the Wahi Charitable Fund or a charity of the group's choice. If the group wishes to donate, um, you'll want to advise Linda Dreisbeck, Chair of Community Outreach, for assistance in making that happen. Or the excess can be refunded to the group members at the end of the year. So those are options that, for you to consider with your group. Uh, the area of leader responsibilities. First and foremost, a leader must be a WAHI member in good standing with dues paid. So I think you are all paid up, but make sure you are. A leader must confirm that all of the members of the group are paid members. You can use the directory under uh, the member resources section of the website uh, to verify their status or contact Linda Jackson for assistance with this if you're having trouble with the website. As a leader, you should be familiar with the WAHI calendar and ensure that any group activities do not conflict with any WAHI luncheons or other events. And you've just seen a whole host of events that are going to be available to mem the membership this, this year, at least the first half of this year. Um, new and prospective member informationals that you all are familiar with are still being held this year. They're going to be held using Zoom, of course. Um, to familiarize the new uh, members with opportunities that are available to them, leaders should participate in these informationals. If you're available when one is coming up, please uh, let Susan Flynn know. It's a great opportunity for you to share your, gro your group and uh, activities. Leaders should also plan to attend Wahi, the Wahi Fall Luncheon for the sign-up opportunity. I'm going to go over uh, the plan for doing that in just a minute. Please keep me posted on your uh, group events and activities so that we can take advantage of opportunities for uh, media publication the pink paper, the Wednesday Wahi e-blast. 
leaders should maintain visibility on the website, have an inviting uh, description of your group and your activities posted on uh, the website. Um, you can post on the Wahi Facebook page. Please remember though, that any photos that you post need to identify the names of the individuals who are in that picture. This year presents another very important responsibility as Tamara said, for uh, because of the COVID pandemic, uh, assuring that your meetings are on activities, follow all of the local ordinances and public health uh, issuances to assure a safe uh, experience for everybody. And as Tamara said, Wahi is going to be providing each of you with a little care package of face masks and hand sanitizers. And I will be in touch with you. <laughs> Thanks, Tamara. I will be in touch with you um, as we go forward over the coming weeks uh, about how we can distribute that. Communication is another very important aspect of being a group leader. Uh, communicate with your, with your group members. And here's where the website and the email function of the website uh, is especially helpful. Let your members know about upcoming events and group activities and remind them when it's time to renew their membership. It's uh, something that probably gets buried in our email notifications, but there are a lot of opportunities for you to engage with your group members. Maintain visibility for your group on the website. Post events, photos, Facebook page, contribute material to the pink paper, pink ribbon about events. And if you don't like to write, get in touch with me. I will help put something together and get it on there for you. Again, if you're submitting any photos with write-ups, please be sure you identify those ladies appearing in the picture. And take advantage of opportunities to promote your group uh, activities wherever you can. Um, if you need more help with how to do that on the website, on Facebook, or the Wednesday e-blast, um, Kathy Reynolds is the chair of communications. She can certainly help with that. As most of you know, there are new procedures in place for interest group signups this year. There are three options that are available and Jude is going to go over these in greater detail in her presentation in a few minutes. Briefly, a member can complete um, a sign up, uh, an interest group preference form that accompanies the membership renewal form, the hard copy uh, that's found on the website and it can be mailed uh, directly to Linda Jackson. Or the member can go to their individual profile on the website and make their selection of group or, or groups. Um, third option is using the uh, list of interest groups that are on the website and they can email the leader directly by using the one click link that's provided. If they click on the, click on the interest group leader's name, it will allow them to email right away. There also, as Tamara said, would be an opportunity for uh, in-person signups at the September uh, 22nd luncheon. Um, and I'll just go briefly over the plan for this so you have an idea of, of what you will be hearing more from me about in the coming weeks. There will be 12 tables uh, each available with two chairs. These are 12 foot tables, so you'll be six feet apart. There will be no closed groups at the tables. And interest groups of, of like subject matter or interest, like food or books, 
will be uh, at the same table. So members won't have to wander around trying to find what they're looking for. Um, since only two people can be seated at a table at one time, um, the leaders are gonna have to be rotating during that sign up period. Uh, there will be the duplicate copy of the, uh, the sign up sheet available for you to capture those names. And you will turn in the yellow copy of that to me at the end of the luncheon. Uh, don't, please don't cut off signups at the luncheon if it looks like your maximum group number is exceeded. Um, after the luncheon, email all of the members of your group. Make sure they are still planning to be a part of the group. And then if your number is, has been exceeded, um, give the names to me and I'll follow up to see if there's an opportunity there for starting a new group. No interest group fees are to be collected at the luncheon. Wait, if you do have a fee for your group, wait until your first get together, opportunity to get together to collect those. And I will be in touch with all of you uh, before the luncheon to determine which of you would like to be there for the sign up oppor opportunity and will provide further details as you know, things are always changing, always in flux, but I will be in touch with all of you in plenty of time. And the last section of uh, the policies and procedures um, is really important. It's the WAHI website. This is the absolute greatest tool for you to manage your group and communicate with, with the members. Um, sending your emails, scheduling your events. So now is the perfect segue into the presentation by uh, Kathy and her team to walk you through the benefits of the website and provide the details of how to navigate it and use it. You're up, Kathy. Um, Betty, before you go on, we have yeah, two questions here. Questions? Two questions uh -oh. here. One was from Mary Ellen. No, yeah. just two. One was from Mary, Mary Ellen Jackson saying that yeah. she has pickle and play info. Do you want her to email that to you? She has, I'm sorry, what? Pickle and play info for, I guess it's a group. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. She can email it to me. Okay, and also uh, Connie was asking if they can have a flyer at the luncheon on their interest group. I guess that means she's bringing it. Oh, uh, yeah. I, it, I imagine she's talking about the quad fold that we normally have. And yes, it will be published before the luncheon. I think she might be talking specifically about her own interest group, if she could have a flyer for her own interest her, group. Her own flyer, she said. She wants to know if she can bring it, I guess. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll get all of those details out to everybody. Yes, they can bring flyers to to the uh, sign up at the luncheon. Anything else? Okay. Now, Kathy, you're up. All right. Thank you, Betty. Um, it's my pleasure to talk to you about the communications team. Um, this year we have a, a group of 11 people, um, including myself, who are working behind the scenes to make sure that the information goes out to um, all of our members in a timely manner. And I wanted to let you know who's responsible for doing all this. Um, Lisa Benson is our Wahi Wednesday eBlast coordinator. Um, and all of these people, you'll be able to find their contact information in the directory online. Um, Marie Danforth is our historian this year, and she's our main contact between Wahi and the Heritage Library. Jude Eakin, who you're going to uh, hear more from in just a few minutes, is the webmaster for member resources. Um, Atara Fish is our social media coordinator and she's gonna be managing Facebook as well as um, 
Instagram this year. Joan Grayson is our directory and print coordinator. She's going to be responsible for the printed version of the directory, which we will still have. And uh, the print coordinator for any other um, printed media that we have, such as the fourfold or posters or um, things like that. Susie Heisman, who has uh, been managing the chat for us so far, is the webmaster for wahi.org, which is the public side of our website. Linda Jackson is the, an ad hoc member on our team. She's um, the membership chair and she keeps us all honest about um, how, what, how or what we do affects the membership. Jane Kendall is, a new, is in a new position that is a staff writer, and she is uh, responsible for polishing up anything that goes on the web. Um, so if you have an article, for instance, to go on the website, um, Jane's going to take a look at it and may give you some tips on how to make that uh, article better. The pink paper and the pink ribbon are still going to be published four times a year. And right now I'm doing that. Um, if anyone has a desire to um, participate in that, please let me know. I'm happy to train someone to take on those two responsibilities. And Robin Zimmerman is our publicity chair. So to give you an idea how, <clears throat> pardon me, all of that fits together and the communication flow for 2020, the content comes from the president, the president-elect, interest groups, leaders. So you guys are um, a huge part of the content of the communication with our, um, our membership. The VP of events and the program chair also bring in or feed in information for our different publications. Um, looking just to the right on the flow, uh, the pink ribbon is approved and the pink paper are approved by the president before it goes out. Um, I mentioned that jo Joan is the directory and printing resource person. Um, we have a training resources team that you are being exposed to today. Um, and it consists of myself, Linda Jackson, Susie Heisman, and Jude Eakin. And uh, the Wahi Wednesday e-blast that goes out on Wednesday, as I mentioned, is being put together by Lisa Benson. And it's also approved by the president and the communications chair. So this flow of information uh, results in a publicity um, action that is press releases, um, articles for the pink paper I mentioned from are with the help of Jane, um, and the different website updates that happen on a regular basis uh, in terms of the front end uh, or what I call the front end of the website. Susie will tell you a little bit more about this, but <clears throat> our new section is a series of blog posts that she'll uh, let you know what that's all about. And then, of course, member resources is um, Jude. So hopefully that helps you understand how things fit together and uh, who's doing what. Um, there are three parts to our website. <clears throat> There's the publicly available side, the privately available to members only side, and the privately available piece that is available only to administrators and all of you guys are administrators. So the public facing part of the website is what everybody can see and access. Um, anybody who visits wahi.org is able to navigate through information that will give them a sense of who we are, what we're doing, and be able to pique their interest in joining our association. Um, <clears throat> in the uh, private, for members only section, you've all seen this. This is what our members resor member resources landing page looks like. And you'll see a very important addition up here in the right hand side where it says having trouble on this page, contact the Wahi webmaster. And that is a live link that appears on every page of member resources that will get you directly to Jude. So that's a very important thing to remember and to tell other people about. 
And then this is what your dashboard looks like when you sign on um, for, to be able to manage your events. Um, and this is also a, pa a part of the password protected section, but it's only available for administrators. And Jude will tell you more about that in her training piece. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, Susie. But do we have any questions about anything that I've just shared? You want to take a pause and ask I questions? I haven't seen any come in. Okay, good. So you're on, Susie. Okay. So this is the, uh, the public side of the website. And we're going to first talk about the interest group page itself, which if you look at the um, top of the screen here, you'll see in the menu, it's, it's highlighted. It says interest groups. I know it's a little small, but Kathy, can you point to that with your cursor? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. And while we're up there, if you go over a couple, you'll see the clip, the direct link to member resources. Nope, the other way. I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that link takes you directly to the private side of, and you'll have to sign in if you're not already signed in. Okay, next slide. So basically the interest group page uh, is available to everyone, members and non-members. It has a complete list of all the interest groups and it's broken down by category with the brief description that you've given to Betty. Um, it does not include any names, phone numbers, or emails of the group leaders or the members. Um, it, that information will also be on a similar page in the member resources side on the private side. And there's a link to download the interest group form to, for members to fill out and either mail or email back to Linda. And that form gets updated regularly. <laughs> so that um, if anyone asks you about that specifically, you can direct them to that page and they can download the form if they need to. Okay, next slide. So the next slide, we're gonna be talking about the news page and you can access that also from the menu. And this is basically, as Kathy said, um, blog posts that we feel are of interest to the members. This is what's up there currently. I, well, maybe a little bit different right now, but okay. And I try to update it as new things come in and some of the older stuff drops off. Um, the news page item, items should include a photo, uh, a summary of what the photo is about. It should be of interest to the members. Uh, and this will also be included in the pink paper if appropriate and on Facebook. So keep that in mind when you're sending us stuff. And um, anything that you have of interest, you can submit to me. The web address is there, webmasterwp at wahi.org. Um, uh, Kathy's, uh, Bobby was asking, how do they get to the news page? Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Uh, it's uh, in the menu on the website. It says news. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I don't. I don't see that on this on the left side. The it's up at the top. Are you on the front? Top of the slide. Are you looking at the slide? Yeah, but I don't have that. I'm just looking at it on my computer. All right. Are you in the member resources at that area or are you at wahi.org? Yeah, I went into, I see the home events, directory, interest groups, governance. So that's you're, that's you're the back end. Members. Yeah, you have to go back to wahi.org. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Because this information is available to the general public. Everything on okay. the front end is available to the general public. That's what I needed to know. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm there. Okay, gotcha. All right, thanks. Uh, next slide. Okay, we did that. Okay, the last page I'm going to talk about is Renew Your Membership page on wahi.org. Um, that's also up in the menu, which I didn't include on this page. Sorry about that. <laughs> Kathy, if you want to slide back, you can show them where it is. Yeah. <clears throat> One more. So right renew here. your membership is right after join us. 
We did this because people were clicking on join us and getting a little confused because if you're already a member and you start entering your information then it says you're already a member. So we put this as our renew your membership page. Okay. So on this page, I've, I've put pretty specific instructions. I don't know if anybody actually reads them, but if they need to, they are there. Um, it tells you how to renew online. It tells you how to renew or how to renew by mail. You can click on the um, actual form there, the 2021 membership and interest group form that will, they can download both forms together and that will, um, they can mail that in to Linda or they can, on the renew online, they can click and go right into member resources after they, after they sign in and they can edit their profile and, and renew and that sort of thing. So, and then below that we have the, oh, sorry, the step-by-step -step instructions. And um, I also have a, a link that you can download those instructions and they're, they're a little small here. So we'll, sorry. we'll just go to the next. Right to try a little <laughs> okay. Next slide. So on the renew your membership page, uh, as I said, there's a link to download and renew by mail, a direct, direct link to the renewal page, uh, step by step instructions, detailed instructions in a PDF form, and also some step by step instructions for people who want to uh, purchase or renew, remove the name tag. Um, there's PDF instructions for that as well. The, the name tag, you have to actually, after you order it, you have to actually go back and take it back out of your profile. Otherwise, it will order it again the next time you renew. So, and that's pretty much it. Any questions? I don't see any. So, I think I'm done, right, Kathy? <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. So, now we're going to get down to basics and um, beyond as Jude takes us through member resources. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and she's gonna share hers so that she can do everything by demo. So Kathy, here we go. Um, I just wanna give a push for everybody as an interest group leader, if you guys can put a word in about membership and membership renewals with your groups, that would be very, very helpful. Um, because we didn't really talk about membership renewals in April, May, and June, we are lagging behind in the renewal process right now. So if you can share around the ease of membership renewal by doing it online, again, pay by credit card or write your check, um, and just let folks know, because we are going to be in July, August, and September going down the path of if you're not in the, you know, if you're not in by September 1st, you're not going to be able to be printed in the directory, the print copy of the directory but you will be eventually cut off from Wahoo Communications at that point. So we really wanna make sure everybody understands we must get the renewal by September 1st and um, hopefully you can help spread the word with your groups. Thank you. Tamara, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here and say the deadline is August 15th to get in the director. Okay, Th thanks Tamara. And that just reinforces what I was saying earlier, a good, uh, opportunity to uh, get on this website and email your the members of your group and remind them of these things. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Jude, you can take- and I will start sharing mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Linda, while Jude's getting ready, she wanted to know if people, I mean, Connie wanted to know if people who have not renewed by a certain date will be taken off the online directory. Yes, we usually do that right before the luncheon so that, or we used to do it right before the luncheon so that interest group leaders, when they're checking their members against membership, would have the online, a current online directory to look at. So the bottom line is yes. <laughs> Okay, um, everyone, I'm, I'm Jude. I'm the webmaster, uh, although I was no master before I got that name. Uh, <laughs> I was just one of you, an interest group leader who has a little bit more 
knowledge of computers than an average person, and, um, and now I'm a webmaster. So I've been learning this as uh, things came up. Uh, let me teach you a little bit about what I learned. Uh, this is Susie's page. It's the front end of the, um, of the website, wahi.org. And what I'm going to talk to you about is this button right here called, now you all can see my, my page, right? That I'm pointing to? Mm -hmm. Can you see I'm, it? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to take you to member resources, which is this little link right here. When you get to member resources, um, this is the landing page. Right now, it's landing on events. Let's just make believe that that says a home page. Um, we're working on that glitch. Uh, I set up a Jane Doe user who has the same privileges to go into member re resources that you uh, as group leaders have. So um, this is my login information for Jane Doe. I'm logging in right now. And this is the landing page that um, will look familiar because um, uh, Kathy Reynolds had um, introduced it to us earlier, and Susie. Um, this here is the menu bar for the pages that are available in member resources. Now, the average member who does not have group leadership uh, or group leader uh, admin access is not going to see this section up here in the upper right hand corner where it says admin view. They are going to land on this page and this is all they're going to have access to. I'm going to briefly go through this page and let you see exactly what they will see. Okay, this page here is the home page. All right, there's always a variety of ways to get someplace. Um, here where it says Wahi interest groups, you'll see that. I can click here or I can click up here where it says Wahi interest groups in the, in the menu bar. It's going to take me to the exact same page, which looks like this. Okay, now this page looks very similar to the page that was on Susie's website. Uh, which is the public, the, the, the website that the general public sees, with the exception of this column right here. This column is all of the leaders, and there are hyperlinks to those leaders' email addresses. We did not want to include this column on the general membership Wahi, um, uh, website page, uh, because unless you're a member, you can't sign up. And this is one of the ways that you can sign up to be um, a, a member of an interest group. We have the instructions. We talked about three ways that people can sign up for membership. Those instructions are right here. They can send an email to the group leader by clicking right. If you look where my hand is right over here, you can click this and it's going to fill in that person's in your email. Um, uh, form that comes up and this is uh, the form that comes up is based on whatever your personal email settings are. Um, it's going to fill in that person's email address. You could put subject Pinterest interest in this case. Um, and then I would really like to become a member of this group. Always include your full name um, and then send your email off. That's one way of signing up for uh, an interest group. Another way is by clicking right over here where it says view profile. I'm going to put that aside for a moment so that I can just tell you about the third way, which is to click and download um, the interest group enrollment form, which is, you should be familiar with this form. By the way, I just clicked on that link and it brought me to this form here. <clears throat> okay, the member can download this form, fill in their name, and then send it in by snail mail. Okay, and not the most efficient way of doing it, but it's an option. Okay, getting back to the view profile part. All right, by clicking this link up here, I'm sorry, did someone have a question? If, if you all would, would hold questions until the end of this particular segment, then I'll, I'll take a look and see if there's any, any questions coming in. Um, and please mute yourself, because if you make a noise, it comes back. Um, if you click on view profile right here, 
it's going to take you to your profile page. Uh, and just so you know how things work together, this profile page is what goes into this directory, which is what goes into this directory. So this is why we try to have things as accurate as possible online. And for even for people who are not power users, the profile is an easy thing to keep updated. So when you get here to membership details, all right, um, this just gives information about yourself. And if you go into edit my profile, now this is Jane Doe's profile. And this is all the information that would be put into our online directory, which will in turn be put into our paper directory. Everything is in here. And then down here is a section called group participation. This is where a member can sign up for an interest group online. So if I wanted to be part of gallery girls, gals, uh, and the Gullah interest group, I'm going to click and click everything that I want to be a part of here. And it's the interest group leaders responsibility to periodically pull off reports of who is signing up online so that you get a, a good sense of, okay, these people were here last year and they're just re-enrolling this year. And these people weren't. So we need to, I need to communicate with the people who weren't here and let them know the rules uh, of my particular interest group. Uh, but it's a really simple way to, for a member to not only enroll, for not only for a member to enroll in a, an interest group, but for a group leader to keep track of who is enrolled in, in an, uh, an interest group. Um, Jude, uh, yeah. Lisa had a question, wanted to know if all check marks are cleared each year. I believe the answer to that for this year was no, they're not, right? Uh, that's correct, Susie. Um, we, we decided not to wipe out all of the interest groups uh, because we're trying to, to take advantage of the technology that's here. And we have ways of seeing who was here last year and who and 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 who's new this year without having to because we would have to go into every single profile and uncheck everybody's boxes. It's a it's it's pretty labor intensive. So we decided let's use the technology. You may have been you now. I'm I'm a new group. Uh, not only um, a new Wahi member, but also a new group leader. I don't know how it was we do, how it was done before member resources became um, a, a useful uh, or became a tool. So if you were accustomed to seeing things wiped out, we're not doing that anymore. Now, if you can give us a good argument why we should, we'll always be open to hearing what you have to say about these things, and perhaps maybe we'll bring it back. So on the other hand, though, if they are currently a member of your group and they come in and uncheck themselves if they edit it, that takes them off of their list? Yes. And vice does. versa, if they check themselves, it puts them on the list? Correct. Right. Okay. Um, can I move on? Yeah. That, I, there are, did that answer your question? I think so. Okay. So um, this, again, is our member resources menu pages for everything that, that, that's on the home page. Now, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself here, but this is as far as the average member can go, all right? You've got this admin view um, uh, box up here in the upper right-hand corner. And that's going to take you as a group leader into what's behind everything. So this is what we call the private page public view. And this is what we call, and I'm clicking on it now, and I apologize for the slowness of this page loading. Okay, this is called the private page admin view. Now you'll see here, this, this box changed from admin view to public view. This tells you that you're in admin view because this is what you would click to get back to public view. Okay, are you with me? So, are they with me, Susie? This here is the navigate on the left side in the gray is the navigation bar. 
Okay, this will navigate you to different places where you can find different things. And I'm going to go through each one of them. However, there are two places that I want to call to your attention right now, finances and website. We're not going to address finances with you, with, with the group leaders. Okay, there are um, a few instances where you may need to um, get involved in finances. Those instances are special occasions. You can contact me or anybody else, um, uh, uh, even Ann Waters, who is a financial person, uh, while he's financial person, uh, when you have a question on whether or not to do an event uh, with, with payments, um, or the finances payments. The website part of it is, um, I'm sorry, did somebody say something? Okay, the website here, I call this to your attention only because you may be curious and want to click on this. If you do, as I just did just now, While we're spinning, I'll ask you a question. Is the group okay. leader notified that someone has signed up for their group? I don't think so. No, not unless the person notifies the group leader directly. If the person has just checked a box under group participation in their profile, it is not an automatic um, notification to the group leader. Um, I just wanted to add on to that. I sent an email like two days ago to my group and um, I had created a group last year, you know, so I already had one ready to go. Um, would that person who signed up online be in that email? Yes. Or no? Yes. So they would yes. have already been in there. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's as current as the current day. Yeah. So okay. if they signed up yesterday, they're going to be in today's um, search, safe search. Okay, cool. Thank you. I, I assume that you're referring to saved searches. Um, so well, I created a group last year. Yeah. With oh, all my uh, people in it? Yeah. yeah. So okay. they will automatically be dumped into that group when they sign yes. up online. Okay. Yes. I have to put them in if they contact me directly. Yes, exactly. Okay. Good. But okay. there's no way to really know who's new to the group, especially with large groups. That's another question. <laughs> like well, what I did in, in this case, because I'm a group leader for the Canasta group, and um, I, I guess it was around June that I notified everybody who was in my 2019-2020 list. And I said, please let me know, yes or no, you are re-enrolling or you are not re-enrolling. Um, and that's what I used to change the population of my interest group when I, um, when I went into, and I'm going to show you how you can do that specifically, but, um, but when I went in there so that I can get a, a, what I now call my 2020-2021 interest group enrollment. Is that clear? But that would be basically that means they would have to have the list from last year and then compare that to the list from this year. Is that yes. what you're Did you understand that, Linda? Ange? <laughs> okay. Um, so the, if you recall, I clicked on that uh, on the navigation bar, I clicked a website. And this page takes you specifically to our member resources pages that are open to, um, th that are private for the members uh, and for the group leaders. Um, but this, this is the page that Susie and I use to actually edit the content that's in there. You don't need to do anything on this page. I only showed you how to get into this page because you may be curious and wind up here. And what I wanna do is show you how to get out of here because it's not self-explanatory. Over here in the upper left-hand corner, it says return to main menu. That's all you need to do is click on that house. Wait for it to load. And you're back on this dashboard uh, and, and all of your navigation. Um, locations. Uh, I also wanted to show you because it is not clear if you're on this page, it's, it really isn't very clear. How do I get out of here? Okay. There's two ways. 
you can go back to your public view. Can anybody hear me? Is, this is Linda Shoulder. Yes, Linda. I've lost the background, which, you know, it's the d demonstrations and your website. They, somehow I've lost it on my screen. I'm using an Apple Pro. Okay, do you have a Zoom icon on the bottom? On the no. bottom? Um, I have the four, three pictures. Like I can see Betty, and I can see Sandy, and I can see Susan Flynn's fan, um, but that's it. At the top, it says switch to screen share. Is that? No, because we don't, don't want we don't want you to to share your screen. You want we want you to see our screen. Okay, so, so Susie, any ideas? Does yeah? Does your does it say over in the right? I think that's where it is on the iPad. Uh, speaker view or. What's the other view? Um, gallery view. Gallery view. I think she said she's on a pro. Does that mean you're on your laptop, Linda? Uh, yeah, I'm on a pro. Not really a laptop. Um, right. you, have to, you have to click on speaker view or gallery view rather to see the opposite view. It's a really strange the way they do it. But. I don't see anything that says Linda, speaker view. Linda, do you know where that is? There might be a little thing that says more. I don't, I don't know on the iPad. Yes, I see more. I go to more and it shows me hands clapping, thumbs up, chat, meeting setting, virtual background, raise hand, disconnect. No, that's, a different, that's no. a different more. At the top of your screen in the upper right is where it should say speaker view or gallery view. Right. But yeah, but, but, but I, I mean, I'm Oh, and very middle of, in the very middle of your screen should be a green bar and it should say you are viewing Jude e e Aiken's screen. Aiken screen. Is that correct? Is that what it says? No. Yeah, it's I down don't. on the lower left where it shows Jude, whose screen you're viewing on an iPad. The pro but is she's, an iPad. She's not on an iPad. She's on a laptop. No, I'm on an iPad. He's iPad. on an iPad. Or on an iPad. iPad. Okay, all right. Sorry, sorry. Then I take it all back. Okay. Yeah. I just go ahead. I'm sorry. I touched whatever I touched. Because it was perfect all along. Any ideas? Should I stop sharing my screen and start sharing it again? No, we could see it. Don't do that. Um, Bookchick, do you know maybe, how to get the view back? She, um, she might need to uh, leave the meeting and then come back in. Okay. Uh, I don't mind. Okay. See you in a moment. Thank Somebody you. Somebody will have to let her back in, but. Thank you. So uh, one of the things, I just had an opportunity to, to look at my presentation notes, and, and one of the things that I didn't, uh, I intended to start the uh, presentation off with that I didn't, um, I, I do want to kind of backtrack to, uh, and that's the general rules for using member resources. Um, I will wait until whoever that person was, I, I, I didn't see who it was, gets back in the room, um, and then... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to back oh. up a little bit and go through those rules. I've got it. Are you uh, looking at member resources page? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm back on. Do you see my, my cursor, my arrow is I, moving around? I, it's a wonderful feeling. Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. I'll mute. Um, I'm, I, I was just saying that uh, I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit before I continue with the how-to on a couple of things. Um, because I, I, didn't, I didn't make it clear why we want to use members' resources. And I think this is very valuable for you to know. Um, members' resources allows only WAHI members to be added to interest groups. All right, so if you've made it this far into here, anybody who's signing up for your interest groups is a WAHI member. Uh, you don't have to worry about some Jane Doe from, from the general public uh, coming into WAHI if she's not a paid member. Um, by the way, an active member, just, just as, you know, as far as the lexicon goes, an active member in WAHI isn't necessarily a paid member. 
So um, one, of, one of the duties, and Betty touched on this uh, in her presentation, one of the duties uh, uh, that you have as a group leader is to go after people who are not paid members, because uh, Wahi does rely on those, on those uh, membership fees. Um, the, um, the other advantage of, of um, using member resources is that you do have very simple directory searches that you can go in there if you're looking for one particular email address or um, somebody's phone number. Um, it's, it's a very easy tool to use uh, just, just on this page alone, just on this directory page alone to find that information. Um, when you're using member resources and you send an, an, um, an email, you can pretty much guarantee that whatever the most current email address that we have been informed of is, that's the email address that's going to go. So if you have your own list that you used last year um, and, um, you know, it's got 25 members on there and, you know, you successfully sent emails to them all last year, but this year somebody decided they no longer are using AOL, they're moving over to, to Gmail. Well, they may have changed that information in their own profile on member resources, but not necessarily told you. So you want to be able to have access to the most current email addresses, even snail mail addresses uh, for your um, interest group members. Um, your events that you're going to be shown how to create in this presentation that I'm doing, um, your events are, are going to be published on the WAHI calendar. And um, so, so yet another reason for setting up a, um, a, an event page using member resources um, because it's going to be public. You, you know, the whole idea is that you want people to know what you're doing. So it's going to be on the, on the calendar. And um, setting up events helps you to manage your event registration, um, the notifications that you want to send to the to the um, uh, people who are registered, reminders that you want to send. So there's all this electronic stuff that's going on that is, uh, you have to believe me, I was not a power user before I became a webmaster. I was just a simple group leader. And um, learning how to do all of this made my group leadership role so much easier for me um, and enabled me to take on a webmaster role. So um, I just want to get into a couple of general rules for, um, for using. Dude, I would offer that, you know, this is your choice as an interest group leader. You don't have to do these things in the system. You can do the things that you've always done. You can add your emails to your Outlook email and send emails and get the bounce backs and those type of things. Or you can use the email in the system. You can keep a running list of your members offline and, and add and subtract that way. Um, so this is your discretion as to whether or not you want to be in the system and doing it. We just thought that this was, we have the capability now to do it. We have awesome people that are helping with training materials and, and information and are available by email and phone to talk to if you get stuck. Um, so the, hopefully you see that there's a much more robust capability that we've got now to do it, but it's still your choice if you're going to do it or not. So don't get over, if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, don't be overwhelmed. This too shall pass and we're gonna get through it together. Thank you, Tamara. That's, that's an important distinction to make. Um, the general rules when you're using uh, member resources is that um, you as a group leader have administrative access and as such you are uh, bound to the proprietary information um, that WAHI is the same pr proprietary information that WAHI is bound to. So any information that you got that, that you do come across as far as members personal information um, is discretionary so, or, or you must maintain discretion. So, um, so please do at all times. Um, members resources, unfortunately, does work best with a computer. Now, it will work on an iPad, e even on a, a, a smartphone, but there are certain glitches 
that, um, that are going to occur on those devices um, that won't occur on a computer. So, uh, and the computer can be an, it can be an Apple computer, but there, there are still, you know, certain things that, that it's not going to be able to do on, on um, the, what they call the iOS environment, the, the iPad and iPhone uh, operating, assist, um, uh, operating systems. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. The member resources is, is what we call the portal. The, um, the tool that, that member resources runs on, and I'm going to go back into the admin view to show you this. The tool that it runs on Sorry for the delay with this, this wheel. Let me see if I can get to a different page. Uh, Linda Jackson, you said yes to Bobby's question, but if they just look at the directory now, it's not going to tell them, I guess, when is it going to be up to date with the people who have not renewed yet? When will that happen? Well, what, what Tamara responded was it's what, if they look it up online, it's, it's current as of a day or two. So it's pretty current. Well, but there's like 200 or 400 people that haven't renewed yet. Those are still listed in the directory, right? Right. Point. Well, when I look at the directory page, it doesn't, um, it just said um, their name, address, you know, because if I'm going to check out my book group, we're not adding any new people. But when I look, it just says the name, the phone, the email address, and the neighborhood. Well, so that's true. I, um, but once we, sorry, I was thinking about it in terms of once we call out people who don't renew in September, then yes, you can use it, but you're right. At this point, right. you can't. Right. Okay, you so can I don't check. need to call, out, um, call them out. I'll just say, hey, remember to renew. You'll tell me if I need. Well, you can okay. click on their individual name in, uh, in the contact list, and that will show you if they're yeah, it, it's you not. not big a group. If you have 200 people in your group, you're not right. going to do I that. I understand. Yeah, no, no, I have a few. So if I just click on somebody's name, it'll you'll, tell me whether they're paid or not. Well, you'll see, it'll say um, renewal due. Regular, okay. Well, regular you have to remember paid online. Okay. Not if you're looking yeah. at it through the directory, though. You have to actually go into the contact list, which I guess Judith can show them. Yeah, so, I did. It says it, where it says membership level. It says regular mem. Well, I'm not going to tell you who I look yeah. at, but regular right. member paid online. I oh. don't necessarily need to call them out, but but you know that way I can say, hey, you know, a silent email to a particular person, say, don't forget to sign up. You know, if I had to. Okay. No, I, I'm good. Just looking at regular member paid online that doesn't tell you which year they paid online oh, oh okay look at renewal due on what date like if it says 2020 june 1st 2020 they're not paid up they're that's overdue as of now but um, as of september you're going to call out all the people that haven't right. paid right? Okay. yeah i don't oh. see that on their profile but that's all right i just didn't know if i if you know that would help out if i you know, push people along, but I'll just do it generally to the book group. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So finally, the uh, that wheel stopped turning, and we're back to the dashboard here. Um, what I wanted to, to, to call to your attention is that per, um, Wild Apricot, I don't know if you can read this, it's pretty small, it says Wild Apricot. Wild Apricot is the, the, um, the operating system, for lack of a better term, um, that, that powers our website, our, our, um, our, our member resources section of the of our website. So, um, and this is where everything happens uh, to get you and your event information populated into that member resources page, the home page, um, and the calendar and whatnot. Uh, there are a couple of conventions that I just wanted to go over with that are kind of wild apricot rules 
And those are, you always want to click save or depending on which page you are, there's going to be different terms. You always want to click save, confirm, or cancel before you leave the page. All right. So if you're not sure of what you did, just click cancel and, you know, re restart it. If you are sure of what you're working on, you're going to click save. If it comes back and says, you sure you want to do this, you know, and it'll say confirm, you want to click confirm. Never click delete or edit in an interest group that's not your own. Okay, I mentioned this before. You have to be very sure that what you're you're editing is your own information. You're allowed to do whatever you want in your in your own interest group. Just stay away from other people's interest groups. Uh, and if you get there accidentally, it's not a big deal because we can always undo what you did. Um, but save us the work of having to do that. Um, there is a default unsubscribe word that appears on system generated emails and we'll get into the nomenclature of system gen what's a system generated email um, when you see that unsubscribe email you as a group leader if if you can remove it from your correspond the the, the um, email co correspondence that you're doing please do if you can't remove it, then just stick a little note on the bottom of your email that says, please do not click unsubscribe. The reason why we don't want members to click unsubscribe is if you click unsubscribe, or if they click unsubscribe, they're going to think that they're unsubscribing from that particular email. They are not. They are unsubscribing to, from every email that Wahi sends out. Uh, they'll miss out on pink papers and pink ribbons and any of the correspondence that's coming from um, not only you as group leaders, but also from the administration, um, the board uh, and the council members. So um, we want to discourage them from using it. It is a glitch in the, the wild apricot software itself that we don't have a little bit more control over that. What I was able to do with unsubscribe, I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it here, but what I was able to do is put a pop-up when you click, when the member clicks unsubscribe, there's a pop-up um, that that shows a yellow box that says, if you do this, this will happen. So it'll say, if you click on unsubscribe, you are not going to receive any e uh, emails whatsoever. So please be sure that that's, this is what you want to do. Again, just like we give you the option of using members resources for, you know, how you manage your um, enrollment and your members in your interest groups, we give members the opportunity to use, you know, the, you know, their their profile and their um, members' resources access to, um, you know, for how much they want. If they don't want to, if they don't want to receive emails, it's their option. They don't have to receive emails. But it is kind of not useful and not helpful for us when they when they don't receive our emails. Um, Dude, for interest group leaders. We really require you to be on email. You cannot choose unsubscribe if you're an interest group leader, a board or council member, an ambassador, because that is our primary conduit to each of you as part of the leadership team within WAHI, is we really want to make sure that you all have the communication you need, particularly this year, about how things are moving quickly and changing and adapting. And we really need you to be on email. So if you've got any concerns about email and unsubscribing, then please contact me or Betty or Kathy Reynolds, and um, we can chat through that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, and uh, I believe that Susie and others mentioned that every page has this right here is having trouble on this page, contact the WAHI administrator, all right? You don't have that in the back end, you know, in, in the back end of that page, but that doesn't mean to say, I'm not there to help you. So if you do, if, if you do have difficulty on doing any of the tasks that you're going to be able to do in this section of member resources. I'm here to help you. So just go ahead and, and e send me send me an email. You just don't have a, a, a link on any of the pages to me. But what you do have is right over here, you have contacts. 
All right. And I'm going to click in my name. Uh, I'm in here twice because I've got the Jane Doe that, that um, I'm working with you uh, right now. And then there's my actual email address. So you could send me an email just by clicking on, if you're in this section of the member resources and you want to send me a quick e email, you can click on my name. And there should be a send email right here. Send email uh, link right here, and it's as it's as easy as that. Okay, so I wanted to continue. The contact, the contact list is also where you can see the individual whether they are up to date or not. You can type their name in. If you took your name out of there, you you'll see those. It says renewal overdue. That, that means I haven't paid yet. Okay, uh, something else that I want to point out to you is the difference between a contact and a member. If you remember, um, when we looked at the directory on the, uh, on the home page of the private, um, the, 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 the private me uh, member resources page, um, it said 793 members, but this says 858 members. Just, just keep in mind that people who, who are in the contact list also includes guests that may have attended certain events, um, guest speakers. Um, it, it's, it's pretty much the Rolodex of Wahi. Okay, in the directory, you're just talking about Wahi members. So that's, that's a distinction that you need to know. Jude, can you maximize that, um, that window you have open there? Uh, that's, that's maximized. Well, it was bigger before. It was bigger when? When you hit the, when you hit that other thing. This hit here? It. No, no, no. The little box you just hit before. Yeah. Hit open that. That makes it bigger. That makes it bigger? Yes. It shrinks it on my page. Well, because it, it, it's bigger on our side. <laughs> okay. All right. Is that better? You can see that. Right. Yes, that's better. Okay. I can, um, you, you can actually just draw on the right side of the screen, her, the web page screen, just and drag it over as big as you want it to be. If you understand what I mean, you can make it almost. Well, yeah, I, I did have it maximized, but Susie said that's smaller. No, it, the way you had it before was bigger. I think maybe um, this is a conversation that's not adding a lot of value to yes, the participants. I agree. So I agree. let's um, move so on. Is that, is that viewable? Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move into um, signing up for interest groups. We talked about there were three different ways that members can sign up. One was by snail mail. That was that form that, that uh, we looked at earlier. Uh, another was to e email the group leader. Uh, I showed you how to do that on the other screen um, in the um, um, public view of the private part of the, the, uh, the website. I, I showed you how to click on the group members, um, I'm sorry, the group leaders uh, name to get to their, their email address. And now this is another way of doing it. You can go into contacts and find the, the, the person's name. Let's say that we're looking for Susie. I don't know her last name. Oh, it's Susie Heisman. Okay. Okay. In here, if you were to click on edit, and scrolled, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong page. Sorry, people. I'm gonna cancel this. I have to go to her membership details. Okay. And you were to click on her group participation. Why can I not see this, Susie? 
It's because the edit function obviously is not available there. It's because I'm not in a group, probably. <laughs> okay, I apologize. This is not where I want it to be. So I'm going to skip over this. I, I, I apologize. I'll come back. I'll come back to this. Um, I don't want it to hold me up from other things that we need to get to. So yeah, we just had a re recommendation to get to the group email piece in the chat pod. So maybe we can turn our attention to that before we run out of time. Okay. Well, um, in order to do a group email, Tamara, I'm going to have to show them how to set up the event. Actually, actually, no, uh, let me backtrack. Let me show you how to send an email to your group unrelated to a particular event. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just moving off my, my um, uh, agenda here. But you go to this email page right here, okay? And it's very important that you know that, that you're in this page, all right? This page has templates set up. And I'm clicking on this, this over here for every email group. I'm sorry, every interest group. If you don't see your interest group here, then uh, it may have been a new interest group this year that I didn't have an opportunity to set up. So um, just let me know and I'll set one up for you. So the templates pretty much have, I'm going to open up the, the um, template for Canasta, which is my group. Okay, the templates have a format that we're accustomed to, that we want to, to use. It's got the, um, the logo and um, other information. I always, uh, personally, because these templates are going to uh, extract the full name uh, of the person that you're contacting. I always like to know which group I was communicating with. It's important um, information if you've got more than one interest group that you're leading uh, and that you have the same people sometimes overlapping into, into those other interest groups. So in order to do this, and I have handouts that correspond to these slides. I'm sorry, that correspond to, to, to these instructions. So um, this would be the emailing emailing um, members handout that you were that you were sent. And um, you can either duplicate this this template or if you make any changes to it on as it is right now, it's going to change it permanently in the template. It's entirely up to you. You can duplicate it or, or, or make changes. I'm just going to duplicate it. And it brings me to what the name of the temp template is. And I'm going to call this interest group. I'm going to re remove the copy. Call this interest group canaster number two. Oh, I can't use the number uh, symbol. So I'm just going to call it template two. All right. And then what it is that I'm communicating to my members. So I'm just doing canasta recount. Okay, that's the subject of my of my um, email. In the design section, that's where you're going to make any edits to this section right here. So by clicking on this section, you now have this very, for, for word processor users, this is a very familiar box. It's very similar to what you see in Microsoft Word. Um, and this is where you can change all of this information. So I'm going to put, um, I'm recounting our group members, okay? And um, th this information is what's called a macro. Let me t show you how it got there. Here, where it says macro, I inserted contact's full name. So that means every contact in, your in my Canasta group is going to get this personalized. 
So it's going to say, I happen to be a member of the Canasta group, so it's going to say, Dear Jude Ekin, okay? And then I'm changing this information because that was the template information. I'm just reusing this to do my own thing and just saying, please reply if you are still a member of this group. Okay, taking out all other extraneous information that doesn't apply. Now, this is one of those situations where I have indicated when someone from Wahi emails you and you see unsubscribe at the bottom of your email, please do not click unsubscribe. Every one of the templates that are in that email template section has that disclaimer on it. This is one of those system generated emails that um, is going to have that unsubscribe button on it automatically embedded. The next thing that you do is preview it. Okay, this is what my email is going to look like. Oh, there's a mistake there. I don't need that right there. So let me go back to design. I click inside the body so that I can use my editing tools and I just backspace that out. All right, and I only want this to come from me. Let's not get Sunday involved in this. Okay, and then we've got um, our design is completed. We're looking at the preview. It looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna save this. Okay, now you wanna send this. So you go into the templates page. Remember what it was called, which was <clears throat> interest group canasta template. That's this right here. Okay, now I want to send this email. Okay, now here we are with, it looks like the same screen, but it's not. If we, it, it automatically goes into the design mode, all right, but if you just back up a little bit, you're here on the templates. This is where, so if you selected the wrong, when you got to this screen and you said, oh, this is not the one that I thought it was, you can actually go back here and click on the one that you think it is. All right, so if you have any additional changes that you wanna make, you're going to make them here. Um, this layout, this is all pretty advanced over here, layouts and gadgets and, and things like that. Um, I tried to make it as simple as, as possible for, for group leaders. That's why I made templates for them to use. So unless you want me to reformat your template with, you know, some other gadgets and things, um, you'll pretty much be using these. Um, look at the preview. Okay. And then you want to go to recipients. Okay. The first thing that you're going to do, by the way, in the instructions that I sent out uh, or, or that you received, this, this, these step-by-steps -steps are in there, okay? In the, um, and if you find any discrepancies, please let me know, but I'm pretty sure that it's accurate. Um, in the recipient section, always clear all recipients. You're going to get a box saying, are you sure you want to do that? Yes, you do. Even though it says no recipients, always clear it. If you're sending to just a few people, you can go in here and find your contact. Remember the, the, this um, record of all the different contacts? You can go in here and you can find somebody by name. All right? And you can click select. If you wanted to add another one, let me say Kathy Reynolds. All right? Click it here. Select. Now it's going to Jude and to Kathy. All right? or, and I'm going to clear all these recipients, you can click on contact list. And just like I made templates for everybody, I also made saved searches for everybody. So that's what these are here. These are saved member searches. So if I want to send it to all of my Canasta people, I'm gonna click this. All right, if I'm going to say, I'm, I'm not going to send this to, to all of my Canasta people. I'm actually just going to send it to um, the Jane Doe fake interest group right there. And you just add the selection. 
Okay, so my recipients are Jane Doe, Fake Interest Group. The subject is Canasta Recount. Remember, we put that subject in before. And I want the replies to go to me, Jane Doe, because I'm the group leader. Just so that you're aware of it, and you'll see this when I, when I hit send, the sender, this is a system generated email. The sender is always going to be the WAHI organization. So you're going to receive, the, the members are going to receive this as the Women's Association um, of Hilton Head Island has sent you an email, all right? It's not going to be from Jane Doe, but the replies are going to be from Jane Doe. And by the way, when I send this, Jane Doe is going to get a copy of this because Jane Doe is a member of her own interest group. So that'll go into her, her email, um, her inbox. Um, okay, I am going to review this. All right, it's everything I want. It's going to, all right, now what is this? It's going to two recipients. That's because the Jane Doe Face Interest Group only has two recipients, okay? And I'm just verifying all of this information. I can send it now or I can schedule it to send tonight if I don't wanna send it now. Maybe there's some other things that you need to do before you need to get this out to people. But you got this done, you're scheduling it to go tonight. Right now though, I wanna send it now. And I click send. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a save and exit button that was up there. If you aren't ready to send it, you wanted to check some information out, you could have pressed that save and exit um, button and gone back and called that template up again. This is um, what you just sent. You sent a manual email to the Canasta, um, uh, the subject was Canasta re Recount. Um, it went to, um, it's a contact list email uh, blast that was sent by me and the replies are going to, to me, Jane Doe. Okay, this is a pretty neat tool. This will tell you if there were any failures that received the email. Anytime you see a back button, click that instead of your browser back button. It's just quicker. Okay, so let me go back to the log. Okay. Since we're, right log up, um, we're coming up to it on three o'clock and I think that was our cutoff. We do have extended time available on the webinar. And I think it would be useful if folks could hang on to see the event set up for wanting to do interest group events. So um, those are really the last two things that we wanted to touch on today. So stand by. Hopefully you guys can stay on the call for about 15 more minutes. Okay. Thank you, Tamara. Okay. So we're in the log and I'm looking for my email, which is right here. That's the email that I just sent. Okay, and the log is telling me um, that it was delivered to two people and um, there were no failures. So these are the two people that it was delivered to. Um, links tracking is something different. Um, we don't need to get into that right now. Um, are there any questions on sending a simple email? Uh, Jude, just one question. I basically answered it, but um, Lisa wants to know, do you or does the ID leader have to update um, the list? And if members log, update their profile online, they get added automatically. If Linda gets it on a form, she adds it. Uh, removing it, if, for instance, she has a member on her list that she knows is no longer interested, I said she should just contact you and you can remove it if she doesn't know how. Is that okay? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Um, okay, so now I want to get into events and building an event. You also have a handout regarding this. Um, the, to, to build an event, which you want to go into the, the um, 
main website's event calendar. Um, this is the page you would go to. You're on the events tab here on the left, and you want to create a new event. Okay, so you're creating event. There are simple and advanced events. Um, briefly, simple events are non-paid events um, that may only require an RSVP. An advanced event is not only a, a, um, a paid event, but it also, there may be additional information that you would require, like are guests allowed? We are not going to focus on advanced events. We'll do that at another time. A simple event, click on it brings you to this page here, looks intimidating, don't be. It's very, very simple, all right? The title of the event is called Test Event for Jane Doe. Just like the title of today's event um, was, um, members re was um, group leaders training, this is the title of the event. You're going to tag it so that people can find it in a search if, they've, if, if they uh, are online and they look for, want to look for something that has to do with, um, let's say, website. You can just click on the keyword right there. Uh, if it has something to do with Canasta, yes, it does. Um, this is Jane Doe's event. It has a lot to do with a lot of things. They were going to serve lunch. Whatever you want, if, if your keyword isn't down here, just put a comma and add your keyword. Um, swimming, okay? Um, so, so these are your keywords that are going to be helpful in searches. The location is Jane Doe's house. Um, this is starting, this is the start date. By the way, the, you don't have to change the time zone. It's always set to Eastern time. The start date is um, the 15th. Now it's going to give you a warning because today is the 15th, but this is going to start at four o'clock today. Oh, not four o'clock AM. It's going to start at four o'clock PM. So you see it's, it's separated morning and afternoon. So there's four o'clock PM. The end date is also today and it's stopping at 4.30 PM. Okay. All right, the available, the, the, the available time that I want this to, registration to take place is it can only take place today. So, because it's a today event. So it's from July 15th to July 15th. Okay, I do not want to allow guest res registration. So I'm going to leave this blank. If I did allow guest registrations, I would change the limit here to the number of guests that I was allowing, which would be one. But I'm not allowing guest registration, so I'm leaving that blank. I don't want my registrants to, to be able to cancel on their own. If they want to cancel, they're going to co contact me directly. So I click this here, but if I do allow it, I click this, this button right here and allow cancellations no less than however many days in advance before the start of the event you want. So I'm, I am not personally allowing cancellations by registrants. Um, and then uh, I want to show the registrants who want to be listed, okay, to, to everybody or to members only. This is going to be to members only, okay? And what that's going to tell you is the people who have registered um, sometimes they want their name to be known to the other registrants that they are registered. We had a couple of people who registered for today's group leader event who registered as anonymous. They, they clicked the button that said, no, I don't want my name to, know, uh, to be known there. Over here is where you're going to put your, your um, information. So this is Jane Doe's, sorry, Jane Doe's event. Okay, and you want to make this as pretty as possible because this is going into, and this is July 15, 2020. This is going into the calendar. So, uh, and on that events page. So, you want it to look presentable. So, you can type everything, and just like in word processing, you can change it so that it's highlighted if you want it highlighted or bolded if you want it bolded. If you want it bigger, um, you're going to change the size of the font. Okay, so is everyone with me so far? Jude, could you just go back down to the show members piece? If you click show to everyone, 
it will show up on the front end of the website. So please do not do that. Oh, because then Good point. literally everyone can see it, members and non-members. So it should be always to no to members only. Thank you, Susie. Okay, so um, this is not visible. Now you can save this page. and see it, by the way, um, if, you can't, if you can't get back into the sub pages, just click out and then click back in again, okay? And um, you can see it in the event list. I'm right here on the event list page. Where is, oh, it's not on the list. Now, why isn't it on the list? Because, Hold on. I didn't click save. Right? Remember this? Save? I didn't click save. So. I'm starting over. I'm a little embarrassed by that. And now I'm clicking save. I thought you did that just to teach us how to remember to say save. Thank you. That's so tactful of you, Linda. <laughs> um, okay, now this is telling me that some required fields are missing. All right, and the start date is missing. So here we go. Jane's house. Start date is July 15, 430. PM. By the way, did you notice I didn't click on the, the clock? I just typed it in. Um, this is July 15. I guess that one you have to click in. Okay. And you typed it wrong. I did. <laughs> uh, 4.45 PM, let's say. Okay. Available from July 15 to July 15. Um, do not allow and show registrants members only. Okay, we're in this part over here. You're going to pretty that up. Okay, and now I'm going to, oh, and here you see it says it visible to admin only. That means only people who have your access rights into member resources are going to see it, but we want this on the public uh, the public private part of member resources. So we're going to click this and make it public. And well, that click. actually makes it pu public on the front end as well. I know. I'm, I'm going to delete it. I'm, I'm going to. I know. I'm it. just saying you said oh, public private. Oh, yes. Private. Yes. Thank, <laughs> thank you. It's a public, the, public side too. Thank so make you sure the, there's nothing yeah. in your email that you don't want anyone to see. Everyone. To yeah. See. Nothing embarrassing. Don't put, <laughs> don't put anything there because once you click public, it's going public to the public and the privates. <laughs> um, now we can click save. Okay, um, again, to get out of this. Just click on it. I'm scrolling down. Why is it not showing up, Susie? Um, it may be because you only have upcoming selected. Hit all. Let's see what happens over here when the filter by. Yeah, that filter by right here. Oh, can't see where I'm pointing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, that was the 15th. Okay. And it may also be because you didn't select allow registration. I'm not sure why it would not show up that way. But it should That's just show as disabled. <clears throat> it may be because you put today's date. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no, but it, but it worked. Okay, you know what? At the, for lack of a real-time demonstration, I'm just going to show you the interest group leader training that we're in right now. Okay, I apologize, it's an embarrassing um, glitch to happen, 
but um, this is the event that Tamara set up for today, for this group that we're in right now. These were all the parameters that she included. Okay, here is her pretty, I don't know if you could see that. This is her pretty version. All right, of what's going on today. It included her Zoom link. You can add links um, to this just like you would um, to a regular email. And then um, what she did was she emailed, I'm going to emails here, okay. This is, this is a system generated type of email for an event, okay. Um, you email, the first type of email that goes out is an announcement, all right, and you can set it so that there might be two announcements that go out and then a reminder goes out and you'll see it says already sent, already sent, um, and then registration emails, this is what automatically comes through to the member as they, as they register. So um, uh, these are uh, the, the various ones that Tamara had set up for this particular event in advance. Again, all of the step-by-steps for these are in your handouts that uh, you received from Kathy. Um, okay, so let me show you quickly how you would print a report, okay? Um, th this is the email log report, um, the, the email log section. Okay. These are, these are the various emails that went out, various subjects. Not every one of them was a group email. Some of them are just, you know, um, uh, individual emails. But let's go to uh, Jane Doe's manual email. Oh, she's, she's not a good example. I'm sorry. Let's go to, to Tamara's. All right. This page is going to show. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have clicked on that. This page is going to show default to only your emails. But then if you want to see every email, it's going to show every email that, that went out. Okay. If you wanted to see the log for, for, for these emails that went out, you would click on, on log. If you want to see an event list of, of who is um, responded to, to your particular event, you would find your event in the event list. All right. Here's, a, a, here's one that's coming up for member, member resources on July 22nd. Okay, and then come to this regist registrants and emails, uh, I'm sorry, registrants and invitees page. And these are all of the people who have registered for that particular event. Okay, there are five people. You can print this page. There's a, a print icon right over here, or you can print a report, and the report is going to print an attendance list, okay? And these are, these are all the people who have responded yes, okay? And this is what your attendance list is going to look like. And this is one of the great reasons why you're using members' resources, because you don't have to keep a separate tally of who said that they're coming. This is here. And the day of the event, you've got this list right here to see who shows up. You can also, because this is a, a PDF, you can export this to your own um, computer. And you can, if you're making name, name tags, you can cut and paste these people's name tags by just doing a control C for cut. And then in your Word document or whatever you're doing for name tags, you can click uh, control P for paste. So there's a variety of reasons why you would want to um, be able to see an attendance list like that. 
Thanks so much, Duke, for bringing up name tags because you can see today I'm wearing my Wahi name tag or magnetic uh, name tag that you can get with the uh, membership renewal process. And Linda Jackson is doing a great job managing through that this year. And hopefully we're going to get more of our members with the magnetic name tag so that we have less events where we have to actually do name tags for eventually. Um, I really appreciate you walking everybody through this process. Clearly we're at the front end of learning and adapting some of our processes for the ability to use all of the great features that are in the system. Um, I think you can see we've made great progress from just last December where we started using Wild Apricot to figuring out how we can be using this for all of the different things that we do. And I wanna just express my appreciation for Kathy Reynolds and for Susie and Jude and on Betty and all of the learning that's gone on um, with in addition to all of our interest group leaders that are really figuring it out. And um, I always say we're flying the plane and designing the plane at the same time. And <laughs> that's true. It feels like. So many, many thanks, Jude, for your uh, demo today. You're very welcome. And there are, uh, if I could just add, Tamara, that there are handouts for other topics that we did not get to. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. But if you have any difficulty whatsoever, I'm available. So just shoot me an email. Tamara, are you muted? You're muted. Tamara, you're muted. Is my space bar working? You have to hold it down. <laughs> if you don't unmute yourself, you have to hold your space bar down, Tamara. Yeah, I'm having some challenges today. <laughs> um, you got me now? Yeah. Yep. So Linda asked the question of, is the wait list possible if you have a full event? Yes, you have to check it in your event setup that you want a wait list enabled and that it will enable the wait list once you reach your cutoff number. So you'll see that we'll be doing that on some of the uh, WAHI events as well um, that are upcoming. I would like to add a, a comment too. Um, of thanks to the team that, that put this all together today and to reach out to the interest group leaders. And um, we really want your feedback as far as um, this session today, because this is our, our maiden voyage and we'll be um, doing a lot more of these. And so look for an email that will ask you to send us some uh, feedback. And we would appreciate your brutal honesty. Betty, would you like to say anything? I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your afternoon. I know it's a hot afternoon, so you're probably happy to be inside. Thank you for being with us. And please let me or any of the team know anytime we can be of assistance or answer your questions. Thank you. I just wanted to make a quick comment about that wait list question. If you know someone signed up and they cancel, you can go into to the, your list, cancel their registration, and the next person on the wait list will automatically be updated to the registration list. And you might also want to make sure people haven't registered twice because that seems to happen frequently. I'm not quite sure how, but it does. Okay, thank you, Kathy, Jude, and Susie. Well done. Thank you. We are signing off. The, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to end the meeting. So everybody is going to be uh, taken out of the meeting. And um, like I said, we're anxious to hear your feedback. So thank you again. Thanks for your time and your attention. Thanks everybody, appreciate it. Bye.